Welcome to worship and happy Mother's Day. In the midst of this odd season that we find ourselves in, and some of us as moms are longing to gather with our children, although some of us also might want to get away from our children. I don't know where you are in that, but we're all kind of living through this odd season together. I just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day in the midst of it. And when I say that, I, I re reminded of my mom. And years and years ago, when I was much shorter, and uh, I wouldn't feel well, and mom would come in and she put that, oh, that cool cloth on my head. It was so soothing, and she might sit and read me a story. And I'm just so thankful for my mom and my stepmom and my mother-in-law, all women of faith, people of faith, people who know the Lord God Almighty. What a blessing those relationships can be in our lives. But today, we have come to celebrate an even greater relationship, a more amazing relationship, the one who calls us all by name. The Lord God Almighty, it is that relationship that we've come to celebrate today, the one that has boundless mercy and grace, unconditional love, all found in a relationship that God wants to have with you. So this morning we've come to celebrate. We've come to celebrate his love, his grace, and his mercy. Let's worship him. Take 
we praise you today for your loving kindness, for your outstretched hand of mercy, for your very presence, O oh God, that fills our hearts and our lives, even now. Even now, Lord, in this season of forced quiet, of sequester, of isolation, Lord, you will never leave us or forsake us. You are here with us now. You, O oh God, who formed us, you tell us, fear not. You remind us in your word that you are the Lord, our God, the Holy One of Israel, our Savior. Lord, you call us each by name. You've claimed us. You love us. We are yours. O oh God, today we worship you.
Well, hello, welcome. Good to be with you again. We are in the last week of our series, In the Middle of the Storm. And in this series, we've been looking at feelings that just naturally arise when we're in the middle of a storm, when we're in the middle of a crisis. Feelings like fear, anxiety, anger. And today, we're talking about what I think is probably the most painful, and that is loneliness. And I think it's kind of ironic that I'm talking about loneliness because I am in, in, in an empty room right now. Uh, there is nobody in the pews. Even the camera guys uh, are not in this room. They are in their own little studio and they're operating the cameras and I'm not even sure if they're doing that for all. I know they might be taking a nap right now. So guys, uh, are you there? Okay, because I would have no idea. They could have all kinds of fun with camera angles and and I wouldn't know, they could make me look really foolish, but guys, you're not going to do that, right? Okay, all right. In this time of social distancing and stay-at-home orders, I can't think of a more relevant topic than loneliness. Now, you may be incredibly blessed. You may just have occasional twinges of loneliness in your life. You don't know how blessed you are, and you should thank God for that. But this message is for people like me. Where there have been times when I have experienced dark times of loneliness. And, and maybe, maybe this message is still for those of you who have never uh, experienced loneliness because then you can reach out to others and you can be a comfort to them. But the truth is, we all experience loneliness sooner or later. Uh, actress Anne Hathaway confessed this and I quote, Loneliness is my least favorite thing about life. The thing that I'm most worried about is just being alone without anybody to care for or someone who will care for me. Uh, Josh Whedon, who's the director of Avengers movies, said, Loneliness is about the scariest thing in the whole world. The cry of loneliness is no respecter of persons. It doesn't care if you are rich or poor, single or married, living in the city or living in the country. I mean, you see it all over the place. You can see it and people listen for it. In teenagers, where peer pressure um, meets out, uh, separates the haves and the have-nots. Listen to it. In teenagers that can't gather together, they can't celebrate their graduations. Uh, That's difficult. Uh, That can give feelings of loneliness. You can hear the cries in nursing homes or hospital hallways. If you turn off your TV or your phone long enough, you can hear it from your neighbors in their quiet homes, their empty mailboxes, forgotten birthdays. To even admit that we are lonely, well, it makes us feel kind of alone, doesn't it? We don't want to feel it, but we do. And and this is traced all the way back to the origins of what it means to be human. If we go back to the beginning, in the book of Genesis, this is what the Bible says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Do you notice the plural? That's a strange way to talk about God. And what's going on there? It's showing us right there that our God is triune, that he is three in one. One God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet one God. And they have existed from all eternity in relationship, in perfect community. Now we could talk about the Trinity for weeks, and some people do. It's called the seminary, and it's very expensive. So I'm going to give you the affordable, boiled down point about the Trinity, okay? And that is that God is a relational being. He has created us in his image, so we are relational beings. And we are to be in relationship with him and with other people. And it was perfect at the beginning with God and Adam and Eve until Adam and Eve messed it all up. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and their disobedience brought disharmony and disconnectedness into the world. Adam and Eve, because of their sin, were banished from the Garden of Eden. And they became wanderers and they began to experience for the first time this gut-wrenching feeling of being on the outside and not on the inside. And and they started to experience this feeling of uh, loneliness. And that was brought into the world and every human being has experienced it ever since. 
It's hard to define loneliness, but you know when you're experiencing it. I know some of you who are watching right now, uh, you're feeling alone. It, it, is, it is not hard for you to find a lonely person. All you have to do is look in the mirror. Uh, it might be a single person who, who you go home to an empty house each night and there's nobody to even watch a movie with or to laugh with. But it might also be a married person where God designed marriage to, to bring um, closeness and intimacy. Oftentimes, it becomes the worst kind of loneliness in marriage where you have two people under the same roof but, but they are not connected emotionally at all. Uh, sometimes loneliness comes because of being unemployed and losing a job and, and you just have this sense that your company and society even is just moving on without you and has kind of left you behind. Or maybe you're experiencing the loneliness of, of leadership where you're, you're out front and you're looking forward and just by its nature, that means you have your back towards the others and, and they just can't understand the responsibility that comes with that and the burden that comes with that. And you'd like to share your heart uh, with the people around you, but there's this, this difference in, in the relationship between employee and employer and it's kind of hard to do that. Maybe some of you uh, are experiencing the loneliness of serious illness. Or maybe you're experiencing the loneliness of the death of a loved one. Or the loneliness of being an empty nester. Or maybe it's the loneliness that can come at times from parenting. You know, this is Mother's Day and I hope it is a wonderful, fabulous day for you. But Mother's Day is probably the most complex holiday that is out there. For some of you, Mother's Day is going to just simply be great. A lot of uh, fun and gratitude and, and memory making. But there are others who are listening who want to be a mom and, and for whatever reason that hasn't happened yet and, and it can be very heavy for you today. For some of you, you uh, have children but that relationship over time has, has grown distant and, and cold and so you're, you're feeling lonely because of that. Uh, some of you, you have chosen not to be a mom and that was the perfect choice for you but our culture still makes you feel like you haven't measured up for some reason and, and so this day is just a strange day for you. Or maybe, maybe you've lost a mom and there's all kinds of pain and, and the memories are great but the memories don't take away the ache that is in your heart right now. Or maybe you terminated a pregnancy earlier in your life and and now there's all kinds of weight that's carried with that. Some of you have, have lost a child. And that pain is just going to be with you um, until heaven. And it was even hard for you probably to just turn on the computer today and watch with us online. No matter who's watching, I hope you hear this. I'm so glad that you are here. Because this is home Jesus came to start a brand new family where everyone is welcome, where he can comfort those of us in our loneliness with his presence and with his perfect love. Uh, for those of you um, who are young moms now and, and uh, you're in the throes of raising up kids, you've probably realized by now that not every day is a Hallmark card kind of a experience, Right? I mean, I remember when our first came along and, and I was so excited about that and, and had all kinds of uh, idealization of what our home was going to be like. And I, I, I knew my wife, Jody was going to be a great mom and she has been. So I thought every day for her would be like cloud nine and she would always be incredibly happy. And I remember because uh, she got to stay home uh, with our son when he was born and in that first year I remember coming home and, and seeing her and, and um, she wasn't serenely happy. And so I came to her and I said, I, I notice you're not serenely happy. Why is that? She wasn't even happy with the question. And she said to me, you have no idea what it's like to have somebody that you constantly have to pick up after. Somebody that you constantly have to feed. Somebody who's fussy all the time. Uh, somebody who um, you have to be at their beck and call all the time. And 
in addition to having you, Kirk, now I have this baby. And, and it can be exhausting. And I have to admit that it took me way too long to realize just how much physical and emotional energy it takes to be a mom. And mothers, probably more than any other relationship, I'm sure of it, other than Jesus Christ, you are the one who can, who can lessen the loneliness with your presence, with your hugs. And so this day, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you to all the moms that are out there. Thank God for all the moms. You are doing a fantastic job. And somebody sent me a video that um, really touched me, so I thought I would just share it with you. I hope that it encourages you. So if we could take a look at this video. Hey, babe, how was your day? Moms, do you understand how great of an impact you have? And I know all moms, in a heartbeat, would take away all their kids' pain and loneliness if they could do that. But the problem is, even the greatest mom in the world can't do that perfectly. None of us can. And so we are going to experience loneliness in this life. So what do we do when we're lonely? How can we continue to pursue the life that Jesus wants us to experience? The life of connectedness, even in the midst of loneliness and pain. Well, I want to give you an answer that at first you're probably not going to like, but I just would encourage you to, to try it, to think about this. Because I believe that even though it might not take away the feeling of loneliness completely, it will it will smooth out the rough edges of loneliness. Uh, Dr. Luke, uh, in his gospel, loved to write about the humanity of Jesus because Luke was a physician. And so he really uh, focused on Jesus' humanity. Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully human, just like you and me. And so he had all the emotions that you and I had. And in Luke chapter 5, uh, Luke uh, tells about an incredibly busy day that Jesus had. And in the midst of that, he drops this sentence about Jesus. He writes, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. To lonely places and prayed. What does Jesus do? He actually enters in to the lonely place. He doesn't try to avoid it. He actually would go there quite frequently. Now, just a little aside here. If you've been around Hope Church for a while, you have heard us talk over and over about the importance of small groups. We call them hope groups here. And how we encourage everybody to be a part of a hope group because we need that sense of community and belonging. Now more than ever, I encourage you to be a part of a group. And there's some of you out there right now that I know the Holy Spirit has been tapping you on the shoulder to be a facilitator of one of those groups one day, well, now's the time to just take that step of faith and let Pastor Larry know that, yeah, I will be one of those leaders, one of those facilitators. But we encourage everybody to be in community in a hope group, and that's so important. But if you look at Jesus' life, 
He had his small group of disciples, but there were times when he withdrew to lonely places. And he wants us to know that there are times when loneliness is not to be avoided, but actually it can be the on-ramp to experience more of the life that Jesus wants us to experience. What if entering into our loneliness actually alleviates our loneliness? What if as followers of Jesus, we don't withdraw from loneliness, but we withdraw into it and we move through it? You know, on uh, Thursday nights, uh, we are offering um, a family fun night online and, and they're just fun activities that you can do in your home and I think it was a couple weeks ago that Pastor Larry read a story called uh, Going on a Bear Hunt. Now, I do not know why parents would want to take their kids on a bear hunt and potentially be mauled by a bear but it just goes to show parents are not perfect. But all through that book, this family meets all kinds of obstacles like there's a snowstorm. So apparently the author was from Rochester. Uh, There's tall grass, there's mud, and and the phrase that you hear over and over is, can't go over it, can't go under it, we have to go through it. And when it comes to our loneliness, there's actually some real biblical wisdom in those words. Maybe instead of trying to go around our loneliness, or over it, or under it, like Jesus, we go through it. And maybe in doing so, we actually find what we are seeking. And I want to look at a couple of psalms with you this morning because whenever I'm lonely, I go to the psalms because the psalmists were writing oftentimes from lonely hearts and they're so useful, they're so helpful. And I want to look at a couple psalms from King David. By the way, King David was a man of great faith, an incredibly strong man. So it, if you are feeling lonely, that doesn't mean that you're lacking faith, doesn't mean that you are a, a courageous person. It, it, just the opposite. This is what King David wrote. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Those are some very lonely words, aren't they? And some of you know exactly what David was going through. You're going through it right now. Maybe you've even said that, my God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? David is crying out by day and he's crying out by night. You get this sense that there's this this restlessness. He, He can't sleep. He's in despair. I don't know about you, but... Doesn't loneliness seem to be worse at night? At least it is for me. I mean, throughout the day, right, you can, you can busy yourself with work. You can kind of push the loneliness away through technology, TV, and social media. You can always eat a really, really good chocolate donut, right? You can say amen to that if you want. That helps for a little bit. So during the day, it's not quite as bad, but at night... You're just all by yourself with your thoughts. I remember when I was uh, in the hospital for almost six weeks, uh, five and a half weeks. And uh, I can remember um, being there and, and having some incredibly lonely times. And my wife and my kids were fantastic. I think pretty much every day uh, they were there. And you as a congregation were wonderful with your prayers, with your notes of encouragement. Couldn't ask for a better congregation. But the reality was that at like 3 o'clock in the morning when the nurse would come back in, wake me up and take even more blood from my arm and she'd turn the light off and close the door and I couldn't even hear anybody walking in the hallway. I was alone with my thoughts. Nobody to talk to. Nothing to distract me. Couldn't go over it. Couldn't go under it. Had to go through it. Just the thoughts of, what if? What if, God? God, when I leave this place, what if? What if I won't be able to absorb the nutrition that I need to? 
what if, God, I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life attached to a tube coming out of my arm? God, what, what will I be able to do with work? Will I have to go on disability? God, I am so afraid right now. God, I want to trust you. God, I want to believe in you. I know you're there, but right now I feel very alone and I feel very, very scared. At night, your prayers are really raw and they are really honest and they're very real. Henry Nouwen, uh, the author, writes this. Whenever you feel lonely, you must try to find the source of this feeling. You are inclined either to run away from your loneliness or to dwell in it. When you run away from it, your loneliness does not really diminish. You simply force it out of your mind temporarily. The spiritual task is not to escape your loneliness, not to let yourself drown in it, but to find its source. You see, when you pray in your loneliness, you find out what is really at the source of your loneliness, what's really driving your loneliness. God, nobody will be there to take care of me. God, I won't be able to take care of the people that I love. God, what if he never comes back? God, what if I can't pay the bills? God, what if she dies? God, what if I fail? God, what if they don't like me? God, what if I can't afford this? God, what if, what if? Can't go over it. You can't go under it. You have to go through it. Psalm 22 is this prayer of anguish. And David is praying, I need someone, God. I need companionship, God. I'm all alone. That's Psalm 22. And then right after Psalm 22, isn't it interesting? David prays one of the greatest prayers of faith of all. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Psalm 23. What happened between Psalm 22 and Psalm 23? David's circumstances didn't change. It was still dark out for him. Uh, Things were not as David wanted them to be. But in the loneliness, in the prayer, he met God in a whole new way. And he realized that he has a God who does guide and who does comfort. A God who makes us lie down in green pastures beside quiet waters. A God who, who protects us from our enemies. A God who restores our soul. A God who will always walk with us even through the valley of the shadow of death. A God who gives to us his goodness and mercy all the days of our life. In Psalm 22, it's the psalm of loneliness. But David came to know God in a whole new way. Because David went through his loneliness and he sought God. And because he did that, he was able to write the most comforting psalm the world has ever known. Psalm 23. You see, when you are lonely and you move toward God in your loneliness, you move to a place of solitude with God. Solitude and isolation, they are very different. Solitude is a gift from God. Isolation is a tool of the enemy. Solitude is transformative. Uh, Solitude is powerful. Solitude is restorative. Isolation, it's just the opposite. When I isolate myself, I cut myself off from relationships that can actually give me life. When I isolate myself, I expose myself to temptations that I would never fall to if I was in authentic community. And if I isolate myself enough, I actually lose sight of reality. Being alone with God is a profound antidote to loneliness. Being alone with God is a profound antidote to loneliness. And oftentimes God will say to you, you can't go over it. You can't go under it. You have to go through it. But I will be with you every step of the way. And when it is too great for you, I will carry you. I will hold you. And this is what God says. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them 
close to his heart. He is holding you. Even if you're not aware of it, even if you don't feel it, he is holding you. In God's great love, he calls you his own and he is the perfect parent who can always, always be there, who will always love you with his unconditional love because it is only in relationship where loneliness eventually disintegrates and our God is a relational God. That's why Jesus says these words. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. To know, uh, in the Bible, that's a relationship word. That's not just talking about head knowledge. That's head and heart. There's an intimacy with this. God knows you and he wants you to know him more and more. For in that relationship and only in that relationship with God will you never be alone. You may feel lonely at times, absolutely, but you're not alone. It doesn't mean that all your problems are going to go away. It doesn't mean that you won't still have long, dark nights. It doesn't mean necessarily that your circumstances will change. But David changed and you will change. You see, David moved from loneliness, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he moved through that to solitude with God. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He moved towards faith. See, David is slowly changing because of his time with God. And he realizes uh, there is a bigger story going on. There's a grander narrative to his life because King David remembered that there would be another king, a greater king, that was a descendant of David. For there was a day when God, in his grace, came to this earth, took on flesh in his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew that he was never alone. And that's why he could move through all circumstances, no matter how difficult, even even going to a cross. And he knew the terror and the horror that he would face on that cross to die in your place so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have a relationship with God forever. And you know what? Jesus, in his humanity, he didn't want to go through it. He said, God, Father, if there's any other way, please take this cross from me. And the Father said to him, you can't go over it. You can't go under it. You got to go through it. And Jesus did for you and for me. He went to the cross and he bore the sins of the world. And God the Father turned his back on his son. And Jesus screamed out the loneliest cry the world has ever known. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He became sin and the sin bearer screams out as he wanders in the eternal wasteland of aloneness. And the father and the son for the first time for all eternity, they are somehow disconnected. Now the unity of the Trinity is is pulled apart. Jesus could take the beatings. He could take the nails. He could even take his friends abandoning him. But when his father turned his back on him, that was more than he could take and he screamed out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he did that so that we would never be alone. You are not alone in your loneliness. In those times when that loneliness becomes so strong and so powerful, Please, please remember that even though those feelings might not completely dissipate, there is a Savior who understands exactly what you are feeling. And he is with you and he is holding you. And the good news of Jesus is that because he went through the pain, he went through the cross, three days later, he found life. And now we can have life And we can continue to live even though at times we are lonely because we know no matter where we go, Jesus will always be there with us.
And he fills us with his life, even to the point that even in our loneliness, in our weakness, now we can reach out to others because we understand what they're going through. And it's so great to hear how so many of you are doing that through notes and cards and and little gifts dropped on uh, front porches and prayers and Bible passages. You are reaching out with the love of Christ to those who are lonely because you understand. But you also have a Savior who is with you and who's holding you. So let's pray together. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, it's so easy for us to want to just run away uh, from our loneliness, but I pray that we would run to it because even there in our loneliness, we will meet you. Oh, Lord, sometimes uh, we feel the ache of loneliness so profoundly It doesn't seem like you are there. So I pray especially for those who are feeling alone right now, who are scared of the future, who have so many unanswered questions. God, would you in in real time just meet them and hold them? Oh, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for Jesus, his death and his resurrection. And that because of that, we will never be alone. And God, I just want to pray for those, um, for those who don't have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. There may be some listening right now who are feeling alone because uh, they don't think that you care, that you love them, or that you're just too distant because of some sin that they have committed or for whatever reason. Lord, I just pray that right now they would just ask, that they would cry out, Jesus, would you be my Savior? Would you come into my life so that I never have to be alone again? I want your forgiveness. I want your grace. I want your life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might, that I might follow you. Oh, Lord God, we pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, if, if you committed your life to Jesus, if you received him as your Savior, we would love it if you just click that button um, online there and let us know. And if you'd like to, uh, we can continue to chat with you about that. Uh, before we uh, close our worship, I just want to uh, share a few announcements with you and And uh, first of all, uh, those of you who are watching out there, uh, whether it's in your kitchen, your dining room, or uh, your bedroom, wherever it is, just thank you so much for being here. And I know the vast majority of you are here because your life has been changed by Jesus Christ. You heard the good news of Jesus and, and now you want to worship him and you want to follow him. And that's exactly why we exist as a church, to share the hope of Jesus with a world in need of hope. And I just want to thank you because I know you're inviting uh, your neighbors and, and your coworkers and your friends and, and, and people in the grocery store and people through social media because uh, we realize now that uh, Easter weekend, uh, we had over 3,100 people on our three online campuses and that's just a huge praise from God. People who heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and this... Uh, since Easter and the weeks that follow, there's been 99 people who have committed their life to Jesus Christ or recommitted their life to Jesus Christ. And we just celebrate that. That is amazing what God is doing by the power of his Holy Spirit in people's lives because their lives are forever changed. They now have been filled with the life and the joy and the grace of God. And, and uh, we just celebrate that. And so for those uh, people who uh, might be watching right now, uh, if you're one of those who has just recently received Christ, we just celebrate you and we thank God for you. And there's another uh, group that I also want to just say thank you and that's to all of you who continue to partner with us in the gospel of Jesus Christ through your financial resources. Thank you so much for doing that. If you'd like to continue or for the first time partner with us, there's different ways that you can do that. 
with our online platforms. You can go to our website and you can click on Give on the right-hand corner and then this page will come up and there's different ways that you can do. You can give online and as you click on that, uh, you will see a form coming up where you can put in the amount and you can do that one-time gift or regular giving. Or you can text Share the Hope to 73256. Be sure to type in Share the Hope and make sure it doesn't auto-correct. And then you will see this screen that comes up and you can put your uh, credit card information in and you can give that way uh, through, the, uh, through texting. And then there is our Realm app and you can download that and it looks like this and you can go ahead and click on that. And then, of course, uh, you can mail in your giving uh, to 1301 Vintage Lane. And again, just want to thank you for your partnership in the gospel. And I just want to share with you uh, just two other uh, announcements before we close in worship. And the first is the new series uh, that is coming up. And I'm really excited about it. It's called Invisible God. So many of your unchurched friends are trying to figure out how in the world do I really connect with an invisible God? How does that work? And in this series, we are going to look at uh, habits and practices of people who deeply connect with an invisible God and, and how to do that. So invite your unchurched friends and neighbors and coworkers to this series and let's pray that the invisible God becomes very real uh, to many, many people in this series. And then one other announcement for moms and happy Mother's Day. We are putting up on our website a way that uh, it's called Meet My Mom where you can put up uh, pictures or stories just to say thank you to your mom and that's going to be up all week. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that to say thank you to our moms. And those are all the announcements. Again, thank you so much for being here. Let's end uh, by worshiping the Lord with all of our hearts. chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken.